guys, it's Emma, and I am back today for you guys with a video. And this one is a little bit different than what I normally put out on my channel. Frequently, I've seen, you know, videos about letting the person in front of me decide what I order, or my pet picks my makeup, and even Books and Lala made a video about um, books decide what I eat for 24 hours. So I'm sitting over here thinking, Emma, should you hop on the bandwagon? Yes, I will, and I am. And so now, as you can probably tell from the title above, in this video, my cat will be choosing what books I read, but not just any books, my childhood books, and not just any childhood books, the childhood books from when I was a toddler. A little, little, little stinky little thing running around in diapers. And I got nine of them with me here today. I went through such a crippling stage of nostalgia when I found all these, holy crap. So I have all nine of these books numbered out on a page. And then I have a 10 sided die. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll it twice and whatever numbers I get, the corresponding books I'll pick out. So I'll pick out two books each time. And then I'm going to lay them on the floor and I'm going to let Charlie, my cat, um, pick which one I read first. And then we're going to do that until I get down to the very last book. Should I have her rate them too? Oh my god. That'd be funny. Can you rate a child's book though? Like, is that a thing people do? Well, it's a thing I'm doing. So let's go. I'm ready to get this done. This is going to be fun. Okay. So we've got the die here, and it's ten-sided, so if it ra if it rolls on zero, or if it lands on zero, then, <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, we're just not going to be able to use that. <laughs> two. Th so that's book number two, and then what other book? It's book number three. Alrighty. Okay, so we got books number two and three, so they are going to be... If the Dinosaurs Came Back by Bernard Most, and Gregory the Noisiest and Strongest Boy in Granger's Grove by Robert Bright. Now, let's get Charlie in here so she can pick which one of these I'm going to read first. Charlie, here's what I need you to do. I need you to go pick between those two books. Got it? Go pick. This could take a while. Oh, nope. Okay. There we have. We have our choice. Thank you, Charlie. Do you mind? I like dinosaurs. I think about them all the time. I read about them. I talk about them. Oh, how I wish the dinosaurs could come back. Oh, honey bun. <laughs> we have about five movies as to why that would not be a good idea. Having to ride a dinosaur like that, almost like a horse, with no saddle. Riding bareback hurts after a while. I can't imagine that they would make saddles for dinosaurs. Illogical. If the dinosaurs came back, we wouldn't need any more lawnmowers. Or we could just get a goat. If the dinosaurs came back, they could help lumberjacks chop down trees. I feel like that would be so uncomfortable for the T-Rex. The head angle with which they would have to take on in order to chop down a tree would have to be like, Arr. they would have to turn their head to the side. They get a massive crick in their neck. Bruh, I hope their insurance would cover that. Would work unions support dinosaurs, do you think? They would have to, don't you think, if the dinosaurs could take the, these jobs? I know this is a kid's book, but that could turn so ugly really quick. Okay, I've got the rating set up. Now I just need my rater. Charlie! I'm not a rating. Okay, maybe if I sit, sit, stand over here. Did she really just touch five stars? Did you really just give if the dinosaurs came back five stars, Charlie? Now that Charlie rated, um, since the if the dinosaurs came back, 
Now, by default, I'm gonna read Gregory. For Kenny. You bastards! <laughs> they killed Kenny! Gregory is just a flex god. He's really out here saying, I can do all these things better than everybody. Like, even the animals, dude. Nobody is safe from Gregory's savagery. Make me some griddle cakes, Grandma, because I'm as strong and hungry as a horse. Say please. Ungrateful child. Don't bite that! Pretty much all the pages so far have been in, like, black and red ink, right? Except, is it like a pattern? Oh! It's a pattern! Oh! Is there some literary extravagant reason? as to why there's a pattern for a colored page and a black and red page, colored page, black and red. Ugh, man, my literature teachers would be so proud of me for this digging. I don't know how old Gregory is, but he's he can't be much older than 12. Literally took down a honey bear. Greg literally handed Eeyore's ass to him. Who is this kid? Hi, Gregory, my name is Agent Coulson and I would like to explain to you about the Adventures Initiative. He literally just stole three eagle's eggs. What is this? The rescuers down under? Oh my God. Gregory literally scared these chickens into becoming different colors. They come out here and help me write Gregory, the Avenger. Dang, okay, three star. You're a tough critic, Charlie. Okay, so now we have to roll for the next two books. Okay, we got book, we got book number one, and then book number nine. Okay, so we got books number one and number nine, and book number one is Katie No, pa Kate, Katie no Pocket by Emmy Payne, and number nine is Stella Luna by Janelle Cannon. You gotta choose. Which ones? Are you choosing Katie No Pocket? I think she likes Katie No Pocket. Katie No Pocket. Oh, I forgot how cute the illustrations were. Okay, Katie's just a crier. Waked? Is that a word? Shouldn't it be woken or awoken? Because he didn't want to be awoken in the middle of the day. He didn't want to be waked up in the middle of the day. Is that made up? That sounds made up. I think that's made up. You know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of a really watered down Kangaroo Jack. And like the cartoon Kangaroo Jack. Because I'm sorry, the cartoon Kangaroo Jack is superior. Change my mind. The topography is so messed up. They can't be in Australia. Because Australia, the, although it does have kangaroos, it does not have lions or monkeys. And they're not in Africa either because Africa doesn't have kangaroos, so they're not in either one of those. And they have to be somewhere with a populated city and domesticated cats running around. Where are we? <laughs> Is this the same weird place that made Gregory? Ladies and gentlemen, we are reading about the main flexors of Emma's childhood. Gregory for one, and then Katie, no pocket. She has more pockets than you. Get with it. Hey, Charlie? I need you to rate Katie No Pocket for me. What are you going for? Oh, shoot. Oh, okay. Katie No Pocket's five star then. Now that I'm done with Katie No Pocket, um, and now that Charlie's rated it, time for Stella Luna. I remember all the little, all the little drawings. They're so cute. Like, I forgot how adorable they made Stella Luna look. Look at that. It's so adorable. Me when the teacher's handing back tests. Using my hoodie. If I can't see her, she can't see me. <laughs> I remember how mean the mama bird was. <laughs> now, why would they do Stella Luna dirty like that? Watchmojo.com, y'all better make a compilation for top 10 most heartwarming reunions, and Stella Luna and her mom better be on that. <laughs> okay, Charlie, I need you to rate Stella Luna for me. Can you do that? Oh, four star? Really? Oh, wow. Okay. Understandable. 
Good going. It's because of the Crunchable Birds, isn't it? Okay, now for the next two. We've got book number eight. Come on. And book number six. Okay, now these two are actually, it's actually really cool of a coincidence because they're both horse themed. Um, we have book number six, which is The Horse Who Lived Upstairs um, by Phyllis McKinley. And then we have Snow Ponies by Cynthia Cotton. What do you think? Snow Ponies or The Horse Who Lived Upstairs? Oh. That's the horse that lives upstairs. Good taste. Now, before I start this one, I keenly remember this book being one of my favorites as a little kid. Oh, it smells like, it smells old, like that really old book smell. He, Joey's a horse who's completely discontented with his life because he doesn't live in a big red barn with a weather vane and it doesn't have a green meadow where he can run around. Instead, he lives in a brick building in New York. And you know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of Belle from Beauty and the Beast. I want much more than this provincial life kind of clownery. I did not like Belle, okay? I'm sorry, I just didn't. She's my least favorite Disney princess. I thought she was spoiled. Okay, but wait a minute. How does a horse live in an upstairs building in New York City? Oh. Okay, so there's an elevator that's big enough for a horse to take it upstairs to the fourth floor where it's just a stable. Oh, and we've got the same like pattern that we had with like Gregory where it's like just black and white one, one time and then it's color the next. Oh, maybe we don't. What? Ah, there's no pattern, there's no consistency. I can't do this, this isn't in my contract. It's almost like Belle was in Black Beauty, kind of. But as much as this book reminded me of Belle and I don't like Belle, the illustrations are just absolutely gorgeous. Like, wow, loved it. <laughs> it's just, Nostalgic. Okay, Charlie. The horse who lived upstairs. Come on. Getting your cat <laughs> to pick books is so hard. What are you thinking? Like, now I know why people do this with dogs. <laughs> I feel like such a bad cop right now. And there's no good cop to balance it. Shoot, she touched two stars. Really? Damn it. No. <laughs> okay. Charlie's gonna hate me so much. Now that Charlie has raided um, The Horse Who Lived Upstairs, now, by default, um, Snow Ponies by Cynthia Catton. And this is probably one of my favorite books that I've ever read as a kid. Snow Ponies and The Horse Who Lived Upstairs are probably my two favorite children's books. Old Man Winter. Okay. Okay, how many ponies we got? We got one, two, three, four, five. Okay, we have five snow ponies. You know what he looks like? He looks like the Santa that you would find at Walmart. Those big animatronic light-up Santas. You know the ones with the porcelain faces? Ooh. You know what this looks like? It looks like a Bella Sarah moment. If I ever saw one. Like, the illustration in this book is just beautiful. Like, like, are you kidding me? Whoa, wait a minute. Okay, we got a lot more than six ponies. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Old Man Winter's rich, all right? He got double the snow ponies we originally thought he had. He must have a lot of property, too. If he just lets them roam around like that, either that or he has very nonchalant neighbors. Still love it. Okay, Charlie, you have to rate snow ponies for me. Okay. Go for it. Five star. Bet. Okay, we need books four, five, or seven. Five! Awesome! Four. Okay, so we got books four and five. And book number four is Little Bear Visits His Grandparents by Doug Renahan. 
And number five is That's Good, That's Bad by Joan M. Lexow. Lexo, don't really know. What do you think? Huh? Oh, are you choosing Little Bear? Yep, Little Bear visits his grandparents. Wasn't there a show on like Nick Jr. called Little Bear? Oh gosh, it, like he had, it was a little bear and obviously, and he had animal friends. Like he had a chicken, there was a cat there at some point. Okay, can, we, can I just say something? The artwork for this book is amazing. Like even like, look at the, look at the curtains the scenery through the curtains. Wait, Goldilocks and them are friends? Plot twist! Whoa, ho, 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 ho. Goldilocks should have stayed home. Does anybody remember Marvelous Misadventures of Flapjack? Goldilocks looks exactly like the genie from that one episode. The genie in the box, that's Oh god. Oh no! It gets worse! They did Goldilocks so dirty. Suddenly, Little Bear stopped his playing. He turned to Goldilocks and asked, Would you like to go see the attic? Oh yes, said Goldilocks. Little Bear took her by the hand and they ran up to the attic door. That sounds like the intro to something I could get demonetized for. But go off. Go off. We're all for exploration here. Wait, that's bestiality. Oh no. <clears throat> Nightmare fuel. Up. Uh, three star. Four. Um, little bear visits his grandparents, am I right? Yep. Now, by default, that's good, that's bad. The one that smells really old. That's good, that's bad. I remember my mother would always read this one to me. Oh my gosh, it's so old, the pages are almost falling out. So run from me. Or what? <laughs> the level of sass! Because this tiger is just like, so run from me. And the boy is like, eat me then. <laughs> I have no more run in me. <laughs> this kid has no, has no business being that sassy in the middle of the jungle. This rhino always reminded me of um, the rhino from James and the Giant Peach. And ha just like how outlandish the, the rhino was and how scary it was, like, bruh, are you kidding me? Tell me you would not be scared of a rhino like this. Look at its eyes. Tell me that's not terrifying. Like, imagine being chased by a three-ton behemoth. With eyes like that, I would run too. And I don't run. And that's something you should know about me. If you ever see me running, you better start running too, because I never run. The only time I ever run is if something is chasing me. And if I am faster than you, that's a problem. God. <laughs> okay, Charlie, that's good, that's bad. Oh, nope. She went for four stars. Okay. Okay. And then, obviously, that would leave us with Chrysanthemum by Kevin Hankes. Or Hank Hankes? Hankies? Hanks? <coughs> Me too, Charlie. Chrysanthemum. She loves the way her name sounds when her mother wakes her up, when her father calls her for dinner, when she whispered it to herself in the bathroom mirror. Chrysanthemum, chrysanthemum, chrysanthemum. Okay. <laughs> she's a little narcissistic. She's, she's, um, <laughs> she's giving me a uh, Regina George vibes. So it's pretty much if Regina George was like a toddler, but also like a mouse. Chrysanthemum, chrysanthemum, chrysanthemum. If you whisper chrysanthemum three times, in the mirror, does that mean she'll appear like Bloody Mary? And what would she do to you? Just put your hair in a bow. <laughs> Chrysanthemum just loves her name. You know what? Good for Chrysanthemum. She's got confidence. She loves herself. So pretty much, <clears throat> when Mrs. Chud takes roll call, everyone giggled when she called Chrysanthemum's name. So we got, these are her classmates, right? We got Dawn. Eve, Lois, Al, Les, Kay, Max, Sue, Bill, Pat, Tom, Sam, Ken, Joe, Rita, Victoria. Poor girl, okay? She's, she's literally sitting there like, 
what? Chrysanthemum is one of those kids that can probably never find her name on those little Christmas souvenirs in like, Hulk, in like Hallmark shops. Victoria raised her hand and informed Mrs. Chud, unfortunate name, that Chrysanthemum's name was spelled with 13 letters. Ooh, that's the T. That's exactly half as many letters as there are in the entire alphabet, Victoria explained. Good for you, Victoria. You can count. Sit down. She even looks like a flower, said Victoria. Let's pick her, said Rita, joining. Let's smell her, said Joe. You know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of um, the flowers from Alice in Wonderland. To put it bluntly, a weed. Oh my gosh, a weed. I think she's pretty. Quiet, bud. Oh my gosh, bro. The flowers? Horrible. Clicky little high school girls. To put it bluntly, a weed. You have pockets? <laughs> you guys are getting paid? <laughs> she put most of her pri her most prized possessions and her good luck charms in these seven pockets. Public school kids, we all know. You do not trust fools at your public school. Public school fools take everything. You have to be very careful with what you take to public school. Chrysanthemum must go to a private school. Epilogue! We have an epilogue! Bruh. Wild. Chrysanthemum. Wild. Chrysanthemum. What are you thinking? Hmm? What are you thinking? Three star? Okay. Understandable. A big thank you to our big star. Charlie. Thank you for putting up with me. <laughs> well, guys, that's... Read my childhood books. My cat picked them. I think that was some good bonding time with my cat and a good trip down memory lane at the exact same time. I'm probably gonna be the bad guy for the next two days because I locked her up in here for a good two hours trying to do this. <laughs> anyway, um, I hope you guys like this video and I will see you guys later. Bye. Okay, but like, it's nice to know that even your cat has your taste in books.